one occasion, Jesus spoke thus, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, to you I offer praise for what you have hidden from the learned and the clever, you have revealed to the merest children. Father, it is true, you have graciously willed it so. Everything has been given over to me by my Father. No one knows the Father but the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wished to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and find life burdensome, and I will refresh you. Take my yoke upon your shoulders and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble of heart. Your souls will find rest, for my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated and listen to the homily. Peace and all good, my dear brothers and sisters. Okay. We're familiar with that greeting coming from our own founder, St. Francis. And what was the source of that? Of course, it is gospel-inspired. But the thing here is, Early on, after his conversion as a youth who was fond of parties and serenading beautiful girls in Assisi, he found the key to true peace and happiness. And what was that? Our fundamental relationship with God as our Father. You remember at one point when Jesus was preaching the kingdom of God and some of his disciples pleaded with him, Lord, teach us how to pray, just as John the Baptist taught his disciples to pray. And then what did he say? When you pray, say, Our Father who art in heaven. We're familiar with that. Whenever we pray the rosary, and we do our community prayers always, especially in the liturgy, we pray the Our Father. But do we really live truly, deeply this God-given prayer, which is the key to peace and true happiness? Look, just a quick test. When pandemic came in, a lot of people got worried, you know, <laughs> di ba? Talagang uh, we were shaken up. Hindi na malaman anong gagawin. At marami nagagalit sa Diyos. Bakit pinahintulutan ang ganitong difficulty? And today, St. Francis wants us to recover this truth about our lives, which was revealed to merest children. Why? Because only children know the greatness of their parents' love. And in this case, our own Father, God Himself, who created us. And so when we look back and assess once again the fraternity that, I mean, that the order that St. Francis, although unintentionally founded, because at the beginning, he simply willed or wanted to follow purely uh, the footsteps of Christ and his teachings, the will of God for him. But as the order developed, well, he became our own founder also. He discovered that truly God is our only Father. And therefore, if that is the point of reference, then we should see each other as brothers and sisters. Ay napakahalaga nun. Kasi nga, kung ganun ang ating pagtingin sa isa't isa, hindi tayo nagbabangayan, hindi tayo nagsisiraan. Hindi natin sisirain yung kapatid natin sa chismis. Di ba? Malimit, di ba? Yung kasabihan natin, yung uh, kalawang, yung sariling kalawang daw, ang sumisira sa bakal. Ah? Kaya kaiingat tayo as an institution founded on this spirituality of St. Francis. Marami sa atin nasisira ang buhay because of gossips. Ayan. <laughs> eh hindi ganyan 
ang turingan kapag magkakapatid. Rather, we should try to build up one another. Oh. And then forgo, uh, overlook the weaknesses, ganyan, to the extent that we forgive and that we help the other person to grow. So yung fraternal correction, maiiba ang hugis. No? Hindi punitive, kasi malimit. Ha? Pag superior ka, ayan, kaagad paparusahan at nanliliit yung empleyado kasi nga pagalit eh. O, yan. Pero remember, and this, this was also Jesus' uh, will and teaching, uh, when you want to correct someone, do it in private, no one-on-one. Di ba mayroong ganung binigay na sa gospel? Kung hindi pa rin maniwala yung kapatid, tumawag ka pa ng isa o dalawang witnesses. Kasi nga, yung testimonial, hindi yan valid kung isa lang. Kasi nga, sasabihin, oh, eh, pananaw mo yan. Pero kung mayroong pang ibang testigo, sabi, oh, tama kapatid, kailangan ayusin. Okay, bring them in. So sabi ng Panginoong Jesus, kung hindi pa rin makinig, o oh, sige, dalahin mo na doon sa community. At kung hindi pa rin, ituring mo na hentil. Ah, alam nyo si Bishop Nakwa, the good bishop, ah, yung aming kapatid na naging obispo, na dalawang beses naging provincial minister at naging uh, counselor pa sa Roma, maganda yung narinig kong interpretation sa kanya one time eh. Kala natin, kapag itinuring na hentil, yung isang hindi nakikinig doon sa community, kala natin, uh, yung parang yung pronu- pronouncement ng simbahan at the Council of Trent, anathema sit, no? May you be uh, condemned, parang gano'n, no? You are treated as outsider. Ang sabi ng ubispo, si Bishop Nakwa, No! How did Jesus treat the sinners? He treated them all the more with love and mercy. So, ibig sabihin, if somebody sins, the more we should love him or her. Ito din yung sabi ni St. Francis do sa mga guardians ng fraternity niya. The more you should love that brother, love him more than you do. Huh? You, you do love me as a founder. Ganun. So that you may bring him back to the Lord. Ayun. Yun ang magandang pamantayan ng kapatiran. Hindi yung nagsisiraan, nagchichismisan. Di ba? O kaya competition. It should never have a place in our communities. Kaya nga, well, galing din ako sa school for 13 years. At yun ang pinag-iisipin ko all this time. Ano kaya magandang way of assessment na hindi nare-reinforce yung drive na maging competitor tayo sa isa't isa? Sana ang mas makita dong mas malinaw ay yung ma-develop yung mga gifts, yes, to the fullest in order to use the gifts to serve others in love. Kasi doon naman talaga mami-measure yung greatness. Anong sabi ng Panginoong Isus? If there is anyone of you who wants to be the greatest, let him be the least of all and servant of all. Di ba? Ayun. So kung mayroong way of assessment, baka pwedeng baguhin yung ating traditional approach. Baka kailang alisin natin yung mga first honor, second honor, yung sa aming kapit, kapit bahay na school. Hindi <laughs> ko na may mention yung pangalan niya. Pero sa mga madre yan, sa Quezon City, maganda yung ginagawa nila. Uh, walang, walang ranking. Uh, nakalagay lang, outstanding students. Marami sila. Para pamarisan. Pero hindi para mag-compete-compete. Kasi malaking problema yan. Lalo na itong ating mga parents na, na, na train masyado sa competitions, which is a worldly value. ano nangyayari? Ultimo point lang. Ha? Point sa final grade mag-aaway ang mga parents. Hindi pwedeng malamangan yung anak nila. Di ba? May ganyang mga cases. Ayusin natin. Drawing from the spirituality of our founder, St. Francis. Tingnan natin. Mas dapat i-highlight yung unity as brothers and sisters and that God is our father, Jesus is our Kuya, no? talagang siya yung grande fratello, siya yung original, the firstborn of all creation as we read in the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians chapter 1 verse 15. Ha? He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. Siya talaga yung kuya natin. At dahil sa kanya, we became adopted children of God the Father. So in this first, on this first pillar, ha? yung pillar of fraternity, yung whole Franciscan order rests secure. 
And what is the second pillar for the order that France is founded? It is the pillar of minority. Minority. Well, maraming usage, uh, yung mga canon lawyers, civil lawyers na nakikinig ngayon, alam natin pag sa minority, pag sa legal parlance, minor de edad. <laughs> Di ba? Ah, akala natin ganun ang minor. Well, pwede rin reference. Pero kung tutuusin, minority is based on humility. That is the heart of minority. And what is humility? Sabi nga, humility is truth. And what is the truth about us? That we are nothing. Kasi ang yabang-yabang natin, no, ang talino ko, galing akong kumanta, galing mag lahat ng talento na yan, totoo naman na, na mayroon tayo. Pero, regalo lahat ng Diyos yan at hindi natin pwedeng ipagyabang. Ito yung sinasabi ni St. Paul sa second reading ngayon. If there's anything for us to boast about, let us boast of the cross of Christ and Him crucified. Sapagkat siya, siya lang talaga yung everything. God alone is everything. Not money. So mali si Madonna ba yun? Yung money, ano yun? Money changes everything, tama ba? O Cindy Lauper? Ah, Cindy Lauper. <laughs> Di ba? Uh, wrong. God is everything. And He alone can change us to become a better person that He wants us to be. And who is our model? Si Cristo, di ba? Kaya nga, firstborn of all creation. In fact, it, from the first Franciscan perspective, the better motive or reason for the incarnation is for us to see who we are before God, not only who God is for us, who created us out of love. Oh, kasi pag tinanong tayo, because of this uh, influence of the mystic theology, oh, Masyado ni-emphasize yung sinfulness of man so that Jesus came as a redeemer. Ang malaking tanong doon sa development and theology, sa medieval times, ang tanong nila ay kung hindi nagkasala si Adan, magkakatawang pa- tao pa ba ang Panginoong Jesus, yung second person of the Trinity? Sagot. <laughs> Natural, logically, hindi na. Logically, kasi... Kung sinasabi natin si Jesus ang Savior, tagapagligtas, eh wala namang kasalanan ng tao do sa ganong senaryo. Eh di hindi na siya magkakatawang tao. Yun ang logical conclusion doon. Pero ang Franciscan theology sa pamumuno ni Blessed John Dan Scotus, hindi ganon ang pananaw. Sabi niya, no, bago pa man likain ang sanlibutan, nakaplano na na magkakatawang tao si Kristo sapagat siya yung rurok ng manifestation, revelation of who God is. Nagkatawang tao siya para ipakilala sa atin sino ang Diyos na may likha sa atin sa pamamaraan na maiintindihan natin sapagat siya tunay na tao. Yun! Siya yung modelo ng pagiging tao. Ano yung naging consequence ng Thomistic Theology? Yan! Meron kami driver sa Tagaytay. Kapag nagkamali, na ibangga ang sasakyan o kung ano man diferensya, haharap sa pare, kakamot sa ulo, anong sasabihin? Father... Sorry po, tao lang. Kita niyo yung consequence ng ganong pananaw. Ay eh, bakit mo nila lang? Ay eh, sino ba yung tunay na, na tao at modelo ng pagiging tao natin? Si Jesus yun! Tao, ganap na tao, subalit walang kasalanan. Oh, kita niyo? So maiiba ang perspective. So makikita natin da- yung, yung basic goodness ng tao at hindi yung kanyang kasalanan. Kaya nga, yung buong project of Christian life with the help of God's grace every day is to help us become more and more like Christ. And this is the goal of Catholic education. Hindi yung para maging first honor lang. No. Otherwise, wala tayong difference dun sa secular studies, sciences, ang tinuturo lang kaalaman. Pero sa atin, it should be wisdom, not simple knowledge. Wisdom. Knowing God's will and knowing how to use the things of the earth according to God's design. Yon ang wisdom. Pag hindi, sablay ang ating Catholic education. So maraming challenges. Okay? So yung sa pillar of minority, maraming pwedeng makuhang lessons doon. 
Pero unang-una, yung nga, alam, malaman natin, lagi nating isa-isip, we are nothing before God. Sabi ni St. Francis, if we are good, if we have talents, all these things belong to the Lord. The only thing we can consider our own is our sinfulness and its consequence, our weaknesses. Pero hindi dapat tayo malungkot. No? Naandyan si Kristo para muli tayong ibangon at gawin tayong paaya-aya sa harap ng Diyos Ama. And this is the whole Christian project every day, even the goal of Catholic education. Yung panghuli, natatandaan natin itong sikat na sikat na encyclical ni Pope Francis, no? Pinablish June 18 at uh, 2015. Laudato si! Oh. Okay. Yung first sentence pa lang nun, galing yun do sa Canticle of Preachers ni St. Francis. Imagine this Pope is a Jesuit. And when he was ma- uh, elected Pope, he did not choose the name of his fa- of their founder, supposed to be si Ignatius of Loyola. Ang binalikan niya si St. Francis as an inspiration. Kasi nga, ayon sa mga experts, yung mga nag-aral ng kanyang biography, kahit nung hindi pa siya papa, talagang yung buhay niya, buhay ng parukhaan, no? malinaw doon sa introduction, maganda yung introduction natin kangina sa Mass. Andun yung mga uh, special qualities, yung mga litag na litag na characteristics ni St. Francis. Imagine tung Pope na to, as a cardinal or bishop, ah, nagko-commute, <laughs> daladali yung maleta niyang maliit, lagi may daladala ganyan. Uh, yun, nasa apartment, in, at nung maging papa, kita nyo, eh, hindi tumira doon sa papal chamber, doon sa yung kay St. Martha ba na, 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 na tirahan doon sa, sa Vatican, ganyan. Iba yung estilo. Mas kamukha siya ni St. Francis. <laughs> ganyan. Although brilliant, normally mga Jesuits, mga brilliant guys. Ayan. Pero kita natin sa kanya yung simplicity, humility, etc. And this is the challenge for us all. Sana itong pagdiriwang natin, ah, at pati yung sa challenge of fraternity, fraternity minority, lagi nating maisa-isip, maisa-puso, maisa-buhay. At ngayon, because of the encyclical, no? ngayon kasi it's supposed to be ang last day of the season of creation, di ba? From September 1 up to October 4. Although sa Philippines, in-extend pa yan ng another week. Sa decree ng CBCP, if, uh, as far as I remember. Kasi nga, sa Sunday, yung, yung Sunday kasi after the Feast of St. Francis, the patron of ecology, yun din yung uh, Indigenous People Sunday. Di ba? Ngayong October 10 yan. So, in-extended pa tayo sa season of creation ng another week. Oh, ay ano yung challenge? Ako napakalaki. Kasi nga, kung ang Diyos ang Ama, tayo magkakapatid, kay St. Francis, hindi natatapos yung kapatiran sa atin lang mga tao. That extends to every creature that God has made. So talagang hindi lang universal brotherhood na hindi isinasaalang-alang yung kulay ng buhok, kulay ng balat, ah, yung races. No, no. Our fraternity or gift of brotherhood extends to every creature of God. So more than universal, it's really cosmic brotherhood. Galing tayo lahat sa Diyos. So kung ganun ang pananaw, ko ako businessman, nag-graduate ng uh, Immaculate Heart of Mary School, no? <laughs> naging businessman, pag tumingin, dahil sa formation ko sa inyong school, pag tumingin ako sa bundok, ha, hindi ko nakikita din yung profit Ah, nakailang hukayin ko yung ginto doon, nasisirain ko yung kalikasan kasi gusto ko nung ginto. Hindi. Pangangalagaan ko kasi nga lahat ng mga kulisap na nandun, mga halaman, kapatid ko. At ang buong mundo, tahanan natin bilang isang pamilya. Yun yung challenge ng Laudato. Si ano ang gagawin natin ngayon ay ayon sa research, 2030, ah, ilang, ilang taon na lang, nasa tipping point ang earth Pag hindi natin naibaba yung carbon emission, isa, isa pa lang yun, isa dami ng mga chemicals na nakakasira ng environment, at ito namang ating, sorry for that, <laughs> ito ating eh, pinuno ng pamahalaan, pero mo pinul out ang Philippines do sa, do sa Paris Accord, yung Paris Agreement, sa halip na tumulong uh, do, do sa objective nitong para sa kabutihan ng environment, 
pinul out pa yung bansa natin, eh siya lang naman ang may gusto nun. <laughs> And then yun na, pati yung sa mga ano ng human rights violations, etc., ayaw niya. Ay eh, kasi nga, ang layo ng kanyang ginagawa sa dapat sanang ginagawa ng isang mahusay, maayos na presidente. Malapit ang eleksyon, ha? pagbutihin natin ang pagpili ng mamumuno sa ating sambayanan. Sana kakitaan ng ganitong mga characteristics kagaya ni St. Francis. Pangalagaan natin ang ating paligid, ang kalikasan, ang Mother Earth. Uh, dinala ko yung prayer, isishare ko sa inyo after, sa inyong mga pamunuan, yung prayer na ginawa ng mga kapuchin sa ata ah, para dun sa pangangalaga ng kalikasan. Kasi kanina lang, bago ako pumunta rito, sa bahay Capuchino, ito yung central office ng Capuchins in the Philippines, we did the morning prayer outside uh, asking God to bless our surroundings and then we dedicated five trees there. Oh, kasi merong sa Capuchin order, may ganyang program. Di ba? Merong pagka-emergency. Ano yung number na tinatawagan sa US? 911. Okay? Kami naman sa Capuchin Order, yung ecology project namin, worldwide, ang tawag Capuchin 511. Eh, ano yung 511? Yung 5, we should dedicate at least 5 trees. Okay? That's only at the beginning. No? And then, we should have one garden for vegetables. And then another, yung one uli, one garden for herbs. Pag iyan ginawa natin, palagay ko, makakatulong tayo sa pag-aayos ng ating kalikasan. At ito'y pakakalati namin sa iba pang mga institutions, lalo na sa mga eskwelahan. Sana patuloy tayong kasihan ng Diyos na patuloy tayong sumunod sa kanyang kalooban kung paanong si St. Francis na natiling tapat sa pagsunod sa kalooban ni Kristo. Let 